everyone and welcome to our first ever story time this is a new series that i'm starting and it all came about because a couple months ago i recorded my voice um reading prometheus the old greek myth and i thought it was pretty cool but when i look back at the video it was just really which was sad, but it's okay, because I've decided that y'all need to see my face. I need to give you guys that. So we're gonna we're gonna do the best that stories can give us, and to do that, we need to be cozy. Now, to be cozy, quilt, more quilt, cushions. If you have a stuffed animal, you get like a hundred extra points. If you do not have Cozy socks, you are disqualified. Once we are cozy, we will then pick something to read aloud and just actually enjoy it. And you guys will get all of my quirky awkwardness that you so love. <laughs> what we're gonna be uh, talking about and reading today is a writing prompt. Now, no, not a writing prompt. Cross that out. It's a writing exercise. Now, if you're like me, then after, you know, you were locked into your homes or wherever you are, uh, you thought, hey, silver lining, I can write now. I have time to write, which is good. Except, I don't know about you guys, but I have not been writing nearly as much as I wanted to. And... I came to the conclusion, along with my writer friend, she does not know that I'm using that photo of her, so she's gonna kill me, but writer friend, we decided that we needed someone to hold us accountable to actually get any writing done. So, because of that, we, well, she came up with the idea that we should do a fake off. Now, I thought Bake Off actually meant baking, which I should have known better because she makes jam. I'll give her jam, but... <laughs> so I made gingerbread cookies and then she explained what we were actually doing. So a Bake Off is a writing exercise that you can do with a writer friend, or even if you don't have any writer friends, you can ask someone to help create the prompt for you. So. You're going to get five ingredients. These ingredients can be phrases, words, concepts, anything that you get and must throw into the story. And you'll get one bonus ingredient. Now you don't necessarily have to use that bonus ingredient, but it's usually the most difficult ingredient out of them all. So it ends up becoming like a really fun challenge to try and smush it in there somehow. The good thing about this is that there is zero pressure because the ingredients tend to be somewhat ridiculous. And if you have to stuff five or six ridiculous things into a story, then you do not care how that story ends up. You care that it exists. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I have an existing story. It is not a good story, but it does exist. When I did this prompt, I was given the following ingredients. Number one, a panda. So far so good, pandas are adorable. Number two, someone must say, my lord. A little harder, okay. Um, number three, there has to be a watering can. Number four, the elephant in the room. And number five is pavement. And I got bonus points if I wrote in anything that had to do with Hannah, crazy writer friend. So that was that. And without further ado, I am going to share what I wrote. And I share this, hmm, not for your enjoyment exactly, but to prove to you that you don't have to write something good to actually write. You can write something completely ridiculous.
ridiculous that you may never want to show to anyone. Like this. And, well, except I'm showing it to you guys, but that's because... Because I care about you, and because this is gonna get you writing. I promise. So, <clears throat> I named it The Prophet because I didn't know what else to name it. No disclaimers. No disclaimers. That's a rule. No disclaimers. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's get into position. I was going to print it out, but the printer hates me, so I'm reading it off of my laptop. Paper won't die. Trees won't die. It's good. <clears throat> the Prophet by me. Prologue. This prologue is a conversation between myself and a six-year-old, which is great. <clears throat> okay, what if the elephant is drinking from the watering can and the panda is in another room? What was the other thing? Pavement? What's pavement? What sidewalks are made of? What are sidewalks made of? Pavement. Well, if the elephant is drinking from the watering can on the sidewalk, all right, the elephant has to be in the room. The panda is drinking from the watering can on the sidewalk and the elephant is in the room and, and Hannah is standing and saying, my Lord. Yeah, that works. End of prologue. Uh, I asked him for help and he was helpful. <laughs> okay, actual story. Here we go. The panda is drinking from the watering can. Well, the panda endearingly, anything and everything a panda does is by default endearing, knocked into the watering can and is currently licking the damp pavement. Endearingly hit with the viewers. Usually those logged in to the panda cam catch an envy inducing nap or a muddy rear end slurping in some sunlight on a rock that can't really be given an adjective other than perhaps gray. This of course begs the question as to why there is a watering can in the Smithsonian National Zoo's panda exhibit. Could it be a purposefully placed prop to emphasize cuteness? Is it an overlooked tool by a frighteningly forgetful zookeeper? Both of these theories, while perfectly plausible, do not approximate the nefarious nature of a panda guzzling water from a tipped watering can in front of countless virtual eyes. What possible purpose could an innocuous can of water stand to spill in front of thousands of witnesses on camera, no less? The warped piece of metal blessed with the tongue of an internet star is nothing more than an alibi, a cloak hiding the nature of a crime as inflexibly as the unremarkable rock beside it. We comprehend that if the panda is drinking from the watering can that lays on its side upon the pavement, then the elephant that must be in the room cannot in fact be drinking from said watering can. The elephant must of course be in the room, for otherwise the embodiment of a commonly used metaphorical figure of speech would be blown to pieces. One does not in fact say that it is time to discuss the elephant on the pavement, nor the elephant outside of the room. It might be said that someone at the Smithsonian Zoo, whomever it is makes the decisions as to which animals go where, has a keen sense of humor. This assumption would be incorrect. Said person is simply a reasonable individual that values the containment and preservation not only of fauna but popular phrases. Given a cloud and two buckets, one full of dogs and the other of cats, it would be one's responsibility to make it 
rain, cats, and dogs, for otherwise the entire English language would be nothing more than nonsensical noise coming from vibrations that we pretend to interpret, but in fact are incapable of assigning meaning. Now that it has been established that the panda is drinking from the watering can, and the elephant must be in the room and is therefore not drinking from the watering can, which is on the pavement, we must seek out the perpetrator of the heinous crime being covered by the importance, both metaphorical and spiritual, of these otherwise ignorant creatures. A possible crime, given the evidence thus shown, would certainly be a poisoning, as is usually the case with crimes and drinks. However, if the crime were poison, then the panda would be dead in front of all of its lovers, and this would be a matter so horrible it could not translate into words as it is now. Additionally, the elephant would be dead, now a corpse of an elephant, and therefore no longer in the room, which we have established cannot be the case. The crime that has occurred is the other law-breaking offense that is usually the case with crimes and drinks. The beloved black and white celebrity was undoubtedly roofied. It would be a perfectly understandable mission to drug, capture, and become the sole admirer of an adorable panda, or instead use it to generate overwhelming profit from a, any sound-minded person who would like to interact with such a beast. The Smithsonian National Zoo would likely sympathetically pat the offender on the back and then tell them to visit Tian Tian legally by paying them to stand in its presence. But for once in Tian Tian's life, he is not the center of attention, but simply collateral damage. For as Tian Tian takes an unprecedented nap in the afternoon sun, the elephant in the room is suffering the effects of the very same drug, despite its irrefutable distance from the watering can full of high-inducing water. The Smithsonian National Zoo does not have an elephant cam. For as charming as these peaceful giants are, they lack the fuzziness and publicity that places pandas on the top spot for public appeal. Because there is no elephant cam, the amount of witnesses for the true crime is greatly diminished from those who view its concealment. A lone security guard armed only with an unflattering uniform and distasteful lack of caffeine is the only possible party that may have been viewing the elephant when it was given its newfound stupor, other than the victim and the perpetrator themselves, of course. In this particular occasion, the ill-dressed guard and stoned elephant in the room share a moment of intense connection as their eyes, which are open, are incapable of registering any information before them due to the presence, or lack thereof, of stimulating substances in their bloodstreams. Consequently, the cold-blooded college student responsible is able to join the elephant in the room and the watering can before it is on the pavement and provide an appropriate dose to cause an unwilling slumber before it is placing said, said watering can in the panda habitat on the pavement. The elephant in the room, having drunk from the watering can, after all, collapses long after Tian Tian, for its colossal size allows the timing of this crime to carry out in a state of apparent innocence. To thus complete the prophecy given by the six-year-old child with an intense desire to be helpful and even more enchanting demeanor than even the now slumbering panda, the coy college student by the name of Hannah, stands witnessing the chaos she has set in motion and utters the words necessary to placate the tiny monarch. My lord. <laughs> Ta-da! 
that exists in the world now. And you know what? It did not exist before I was given the prompt. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it is two pages of nonsense. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that there's a two page minimum, but this that's for short stories and uh, you live your life, do whatever you want. If you want to make it more or less, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's what I wrote. I am giving it to you guys to see, hear, suffer through, whatever it is. Um, and if you guys would like to try a little bake off as well, I'm going to give you guys a couple of ingredients. Now, if you actually write a two-page story with the ingredients that I am offering, I, I'll, I'll mention you in the next video. I mean, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll gush about you in the next video. So even if you don't want to show me your story, if you, if you just want to say like, hey, I actually wrote, OMG, then I will probably respond, OMG, that's amazing. Your words are, are, Seaweed, aqueduct, stars, tassels, and shoelaces. And then your bonus word is, or your bonus ingredient is gonna be uh, a charcoal drawing or a charcoal rendition of an adorable teddy bear. You include that I will be so overjoyed so that's it for story time today thank you for joining me um, if there's anything that you guys would like me to read let me know um, and I could tell you to subscribe and like follow I don't know anything but if you do you would make me happy. And wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great? Isn't it cool that you have the power to like press a button and bam, somebody else from wherever I am is happy? That's pretty cool. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.